everybody, this is a random NG, and I'm going to show you my balanced train unloader, Factorio. Um, basically, uh, what it does is uh, picks the uh, station with the lowest number of resources in its buffer here that's not currently blocked by a train. Uh, this is pretty handy because uh, if you've got a lot of different uh, output mining outposts, you pretty much want to take them all to the central location, uh, and uh, it sort of lets it pick the right station to unload to uh, based on the need. Uh, so basically you've got the uh, two stations here both named uh, copper unload uh, so you can just have everybody uh, all the mining stations just unload to this guy uh, and the basic premise is you uh, get a signal for all the storage uh, in each station you're gonna run some combinators through it and calculate the whole minimum uh, the minimum signal comes down here uh, and combines with each station signal to determine whether or not this rail signal uh, should be closed. So basically it says like, hey, if you've got more, if your station signal is greater than the minimum, uh, why don't you close off? Uh, and I've got a bit of extra logic here to sort of handle some of the edge conditions. I can walk through it. Uh, the, th the way that we detect if a train is here is we've got this sort of read signal here which all, it's not really for controlling the train, it's just for seeing uh, if it's been marked as red or not. Uh, and uh, uh, and we use that uh, signal in here to combine with it and uh, modify the stored signal. So what's happening here is we're going, getting the stored signal. Uh, we've got the copper ore here, we measure the copper ore, we're just adding zero to it to translate it to this S, so the stored signal. Then over here, we are uh, combining the rail signal here, you were reading, and a constant combinator. And we're basically saying, like, hey, as long as it's red, multiply by this very large signal, which is set to be a constant 100k. And then we go over here and add that large signal to the storage. So what that means is, when a train is in the station, it's going to add a large number, 100,000, to the uh, storage. And what that's going to mean, it's going to say, like, hey, don't pick me. Even if it looks like I have the fewest number of resources, I've got a train, pick something else. Uh, so this goes over here. The first station uh, also outputs M. Uh, so it's passing the current minimum signal down here. So this is a, uh, this is a working signal at this point. So it's saying, like, hey, at this point, we're the, we're the lowest one. So it's just translating the S signal to an M signal with this arithmetic combinator. And it's going to pass it over here to this substation. Uh, the substation and all these combinators are sort of like the working minimum logic. Then it's passed down here to say the final on the final minimum on these big electric poles. Um, and in order to get the next stage of the minimum, these three combinators right here are what calculate the new minimum given the current minimum coming in through the substation on the M signal and the new uh, S signal coming from this station. So how much storage in here? There's a arithmetic combinator with M minus S, outputting I as an intermediate signal, uh, M less than S, outputting I as the input count, uh, and then it passes it finally, uh, S plus that intermediate signal uh, equals the new in the minimum. Uh, it's sort of a roundabout way of doing it, since there's no minimum combinator in Factorio right now. Uh, this, the math all works out uh, and makes the uh, final minimum, uh, thanks to some other person, I'll mention them in the description. I forget who did it, but uh, they based my design off of uh, and had my understanding of uh, arithmetic circuits from uh, this YouTube video, but I'll mention them in the comments. Uh, anyway, uh, final minimum is passed down this way. You can actually clone this whole area and uh, repeat it as many times as you want, since it just passes the new minimum down. So as long as you bring the signal back around and combine it over here, uh, it works just fine. Uh, the one last uh, touch I put on it is because if you just say close the signal if it's greater than the um, greater than the minimum, it does a lot of flickering because uh, if it has to be exactly the minimum, it doesn't work out because the signal can take some time to propagate, and by the time the minimum signal gets back here, uh, you've actually got uh, a different count, so it sort of flickers a lot. Uh, in order to protect against that. We actually run the signal, th the station signal, through one last modifier, where we say, "Hey, just remove 20 from it." That gives it a little bit more buffer room. So, if 
two stations are within the 10 of each other, they're probably going to, they'll both be green, but that's fine since you don't really care about a difference of 20 anyway. It just sort of makes things a bit more stable. So this one says minus 20, output says S again. Uh, and then over here you say, we're going to close the signal if your station signal is greater than the minimum. So basically what this means is if you're really 20 greater than the minimum signal, we're going to close you off. And um, that's pretty much it for the, uh, the circuit network here. And um, uh, since I like to have a lot of different mining outposts, uh, and I need some storage space for my the trains in case all these are filled up, because I don't want to necessarily have to make you know a whole bunch of bazillion uh, stations and a bazillion belts to deal with all of it. I want to have like a little bit of train buffer here. So in order to, in order to do that, I got a uh, some rail chain signals that are coming up here, and these four holding areas. So most of the time, the train just goes down through here uh, if there's uh, if there's an open slot. Uh, otherwise, it'll wait here. If another train comes in, it'll wait here. Uh, these chain signals make it so that they don't come up and uh, block one of the stations as it tries to get in. Uh, but back here, to, at the start of the each holding area, you've got a regular rail signal. Uh, and then I have some chain signals over here as well to lead up to it. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, you can very easily uh, blueprint this and copy it over to a rail, uh, to, the, to the iron ore, rather than copper setup. All you have to do is translate copper to S, and all the uh, circuitry stays the same. Uh, sort of uh, generalized for whatever resource you care about. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it, I think. Um, thanks for watching my uh, tutorial. I uh, hope this helps you make a more efficient train and loading station. Bye.